Since the square root of cosine x is a composite function, to find its second derivative, we're going to have to use the chain rule, which tells us that the derivative of f of g is f prime of g times g prime. So let's give that a try to find the second derivative. The first thing we should probably do is rewrite the second derivative and the square root a little bit. So first we'll say the second derivative of the square root of cosine x is the same as the derivative of the derivative of the square root of cosine x, and then rewrite the square root as an exponent. So this is the same as the derivative of the derivative of cosine x to the one half. One half power is the same as that square root. Writing it as a power makes it easier, of course, to use the power rule. So now we'll go ahead and take the first derivative of the square root of cosine x, which we've written, of course, as cosine x to the one half. We must bring the one half power out front as a factor and then reduce the power by one. So now the power, instead of being one half, is negative half. Keep in mind, this is a composite function. We're using the chain rule here. So this inside function, cosine x, we have to leave unchanged. But then we have to multiply by its derivative. That's the g prime of x in the chain rule. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So after taking the derivative with the power rule and getting this, we then have to multiply by negative sine x. This is all the first derivative and so we still have a derivative operator out front because we're looking for the second derivative. Then we might as well take that factor of negative one and the factor of one half outside of this derivative. So now we have negative one half times the derivative of all of this. So now we're gonna have to use the chain rule again and we're also gonna have to use the product rule because we have this composite function multiplied by sine x. The product rule, hopefully you remember, is f prime g plus g prime f. So applying the product rule, here is our f prime g. Now, what's going on here? Well, if we call cosine to the negative one half our f, we have to take its derivative for f prime. So the negative one half comes down in front, we see that there as a factor, and then we have to reduce the power by one. Negative one half minus one gives us that power of negative three halves. Again, we're using the chain rule here, so the inside function needs to remain unchanged. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So we multiply by negative sine x. All of that is f prime, but then we have to multiply by g, which is sine x. That's where that second factor of sine x comes from. Then we just have to add g prime f. If g is sine x, then of course g prime is cosine x. And as we already said, f is cosine x to the negative half. So that's g prime f. And all the way out front, we still have that negative one half from before. So this is the second derivative. Then we just do some simplification. Negative one half times negative one half is positive one fourth. But then we also have this negative. So it turns out to be negative one fourth. Then we have cosine x to the negative three halves. And sine x times sine x is sine squared x. And then we have negative one half times all of this, which is negative one half times, by our exponent laws, this is cosine to the one times cosine to the negative half, add the exponents together, and we get cosine to the one half x. And that's the second derivative of the square root of cosine x. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. I'm stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm 